Good morning, listeners of this SIPS podcast. This morning, we're lucky enough to be joined by a lady called Lynn, who has lots of buying experience. And this morning, she's going to spare a few minutes of her time to talk to us about her experience in relation to sourcing. So firstly, Lynn, welcome and thank you on behalf of myself and the SIPS members for your time this morning. Good morning and no problem at all. Thank you very much. Firstly, before we get going and get into the main body of, of this podcast, can I just ask you to explain to the listeners a little bit about yourself, um, your role and who you work for, please? Yep, yeah, I um, work for Aspire Equine and we are a business that sources and supplies products for the equine industry. Um, we've grown year on year and we provide a whole range of different products and services um, to the horse world. That sounds really interesting. Something quite different from the sort of manufacturing or the public sector side that we often have on these. So great stuff. Thank you very much. So in relation to sourcing, I'm sure you have an array of products and services that, that you do. Can you talk to us about some of the products and services that you have to source, please? Yeah, sure. Um, one of the main things we um, source and provide is equine bedding um, in very large quantities. That could be wood chip, shavings, pellets, cardboard. Um, so yeah, we have quite a good selection of the bedding. And as we're growing, we're providing more products and we're looking at things like mountain blocks, um, hay feeders, a whole load, a whole host of things. Whatever the horse needs, we can generally source it. I see, I understand. So when you are sourcing a product, what sort of things would you consider? Um, first of all, obviously, I need to see whether we could actually make it ourselves or whether we need to buy it in. A lot of the products we do need to buy in because we just wouldn't have the capacity to make things like um, shavings and wood chip because they come from large manufacturing sites. But um, I mentioned the mounting blocks. That's something we did think about. Um, and when we looked at the prices to buy in, they're really expensive. So we sort of put our heads together and sort of looked at whether or not we could actually make these ourselves. Yeah. Um, we're in the prototype stage, but we may be able to roll that out using um, a local chap that works for us to produce those. Oh, fantastic. So that's really a true example of a make or buy decision in, in process. So interesting to keep in touch and see what sort of decision you make on that and potentially do a, a follow up podcast in the future to let the listeners know what you decide. Yeah. I mean, if they really take off, obviously our little one man guy won't be able to have the capacity to, to knock yeah. out loads and loads of them. But initially, we, we would like to, to um, make ourselves. Brilliant. And I suppose as well, you mentioned their um, wood shavings. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I would imagine that's sort of helping to contribute towards sustainability in some way, because that's a, a waste product from, from timber suppliers. It is, yes. When we first, um, well, we've, we've been supplying these for quite a while. When I came on board, um, I looked at the supplier and the company name had the word forest in it and it said it was 100% natural. Now, yeah. to me, that rang alarm bells for sustainability. Mm -hmm. So I looked into it, I spoke to the company and I was really happy to find out that actually it's 100% recycled wood. So the okay. name Forest in their company um, doesn't, didn't actually reflect that they were chopping down trees and making wood chip for horses to poo and wee on. So the fact that they were recycling old wood was you know, a really good fit for us ethically. Sounds good. And, and yeah, great that you actually looked into that as well. I think that's, that's very much a, a tick from Sips's perspective. Mm. So when, when you're actually looking to, to buy a product, can you talk me through what sort of process you go through? What's your thought pattern when you realise that you need to buy something? Um, first of all, I research the suppliers, um, have a look out on the market, what the levels of competition are. Yeah. Um, social media is fantastic in the horse world because everybody's got an opinion. So you can really get a good feel for different suppliers and different products. 
Um, so I'd get a short list of some suppliers that look like they're popular. Yeah. Um, and then I'd look to evaluate them to see whether they've got the expertise and the capacity to help us. Yeah. I mean, we're now um, supplying really large equine yards. So it's not a case of a few bales of shavings from a small company. We're looking at whole lorry loads of 16 pallets. That's an awful lot of shavings. So the companies need to be able to produce that for us and hold that stock for us. And again, I touched on the ethical side about the sustainability. That's really important for us. Um, so yeah, just finding supplies that fit with all of our needs yeah. uh, and meet all our criteria and that have you know, the capacity to, to make our product the quality we want. I understand. And, and with regard to, to those shavings and, and the bedding, do you just buy from one supplier or do you consider several? Talk me through that, please, Lynn. It really depends um, on the, the value of the product to us and the volumes we sell in. Um, obviously, we don't want to run the risk of running out. Um, no. Horse people are notoriously bad at um, ordering in advance. and They always leave everything to the last minute. So we need a supply that we know that can supply short notice um so we did have an instance where um one of the manufacturers had a problem with the machinery and production went down for three days and they didn't hold large stock so we had to really quickly find another supplier to make sure we didn't let the client down yeah. so we've, we've actually now have a dual source so we keep one on standby just in case yes. The, the other supplier has any problems um, because it's really important that we don't let our clients down. They need the bedding when they need the bedding. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. So interesting what you say there about sort of the horse world being quite reactive, really, rather than proactive. Yes. So again, yeah. the need for, for, for you people at Aspire Equine to be quite agile with your supplier database so that they can react and be flexible when, when you need something. Yeah, I mean, we do. We keep, um, it's, it's, you know, it's a simple thing, but we keep a spreadsheet on orders. So we get a pattern of how often the client orders. So we can generally sort of guess when we think they're going to order. We, you know, that, that depends on whether if the horses are in a lot, they're going to mess their stables quicker. So we try and be quite um, smart at knowing what our customers want, as well as having that dual source, just in case. Yep, I understand. And how do you decide then which type of suppliers would fit with your organisation and which suppliers maybe you just need to politely decline working with? Um, obviously, I go through due diligence with them. Um, I, I'm a very strong believer in auditing suppliers. Some people might say, mm, horse bedding, does it really matter? Uh, mm -hmm. To me, yes, it does. Um, I've come from a background of providing quality in um, training venues. So... Mm -hmm obviously I need, I've bought that skill with me and it just goes hand in hand that you do due diligence, you make sure your suppliers are as good as they say they are. Yeah. So what I tend to do is if I get a new supplier that I'm interested in, I'll get samples from them. Yeah. Um, because a lot of our products, we order direct from the manufacturer and they go straight out to the customer. So we don't That's actually nice. see the product, we don't yeah. hold it. So it's really important that we do get the samples. Yeah. Um, communication is really important to us because, again, you know, it's last minute orders. I need to know that I can either pick up the phone or email my one contact at the supplier mm -hmm. and she will get that order put through quickly. So having a good relationship with her ensures that they look after us. Yeah. Uh, logistics is really important to us, the distribution of the product. Um, give you an example, the, the shavings are delivered on pallets. Now, a lot of yards are run by young girls. Um, they're not very strong. Um, lots of distribution companies will drop the pallet at the curbside and drive off. The poor wow. girls have then got the job of lifting 65 odd bales of heavy product to where they want it. So for us, having a supplier that can guarantee us the delivery where the chap is helpful, he has a forklift and he will willingly offload and put the stuff where the client wants it. 
Mm. Now, this is where we think we stand out in the market because a lot of other suppliers will only have curbside. And, you know, a lot of our customers love us because they think they're being looked after and the stuff's put where they want it. So that gets a really good reputation. Yeah. And, and I guess that's a real true example of the difference between buying on price and cost for your suppliers. Yes. Yes. I mean, we, we do. We're not the cheapest, but we are a company that our customers know that, you know, they'll get a time slot. So they haven't got to hang around at the yard all day and it's put where they want it. And they love that. You know, they, they, they feed back to us that that's really important. That's good to know. And mm. once you've got a contract in place and we'll keep on with with this bedding because it's it's very interesting mm. um, once you've got a contract in place what what happens then how do you look at sort of managing things moving forward i do regular reviews uh quarterly i will have a meeting with the supplier it might be a virtual meeting or i may pop up to the factory and just you know i like them to see a face rather than just an email um, I keep KPIs just to make sure that you know delivery times are maintained, yeah. that the quality of the product is as it should be, lead times are maintained at what they say they're going to be. And also as well, we always welcome feedback from our customers. So once they've had a delivery, if it's a, if it's a new customer, yeah. I'll drop them an email or I'll call them and I'll just say, you know, everything okay with your shavings? Yeah. Um, and I'll actually go and visit clients as well and oh, look at the bedding in situ yeah. so I can make sure that the quality is maintained without the supplier knowing that I'm checking on them <laughs> if you know what I mean if I ask them to send me a sample they might send me the best they've got yeah. if I could actually see it in place then I know that that product is as it should be that makes perfect sense Lynn. yeah mm. that's, that's a really good idea and last question before I let you go this morning in in your opinion what do you think is the most important thing to think about when sourcing? Um, for me, I think it's really important that you ensure that the supplier that you work with, you can work with well and that you trust them and that they're reliable. Price is something that can always be negotiated, but it's having that, being able to work with them and trust them is key for me. Brilliant. Well, that's great, Lynn. Thank you ever so much for your time this morning. I'm really grateful and uh, the best of luck with everything you're doing. It certainly sounds like you're, you're doing a good job. You've got sustainability covered. You're looking at doing sourcing in, in a, a pretty effective way. So I wish you all the best. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Nice to meet you. Bye. Bye. Bye.